videos before on uh, making the spur swingers. Uh, there's some here on my channel. Uh, I thought I'd go over um, a little bit of the steps uh, with an updated video and uh, I'm going to show you an extra touch to them to it puts a little more detail in them uh, to make them uh, stand out. Okay so first of all I showed uh, on a, a short the other day me bending these and I also have a video on my channel showing how I make the jig that I make these with. Now a lot of people will uh, make their swingers and before they bend them they'll put their hanger in there and uh, what I was taught to do is go ahead and put the hangers on the spur and brad them on and all that get that all out of the way polish the spur all up and the last thing take a wedge hammer down in this opening here open these swingers up and then push them up onto the hanger, clamp them, put your button in there, and brad them. And that's the way I was taught. That's why I don't ever put the hangers in them uh, before I bend them. And I think you get a pretty good bend this way. Anyway, I start with a 5 8 strip, and uh, we want to take them down to 9 16 to fit the pattern that I have. Uh, you can see that this is a little wide, but I start with a 5 8 just so I have some room to correct everything. Now, if your uh, swinger is not bent flat, the top layer bent flat on top of the bottom layer, you can take some pliers and kind of angle them and just bend it over like that and get them lined up straight. Okay, the next thing, what I do is I take my dividers and I set them at 9 16 and I just put the swinger down on here and I carefully scrub me a line along one side so I know how much to take this uh, swinger down to. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here to my belt sander and we're going to take this side down to that line and then I'm going to start sanding some of this and show you uh, how to even up the end, get them rounded, and so forth. Okay, we're over here on my tube of 72 belt sander. I've got a 50 grit belt on here. Uh, this is, uh, I've got some plans on my channel of how I made this or, or show how it's made. It's a design that was put out by Bruce Cheney, and I just did a few changes to it, but basically it's what he uh, uses and what he built himself. I learned how to do this from him. Anyway, uh, we've got our 9 16 line scribed on here, and uh, I forgot to mention over there, I also take a washer, and I put it right here on the short end, and I scribe a line over so I know how much curve to put on here and that way they all come out with the same amount of curve on them. Just set your washer up there on the short side and scribe it across the top. So then what you'll do is you'll take down this other side to the length of the front one and then you'll just curve it to that scribe line. And all that happens after you take it back to the 9 16th line. We're going to put some vice grips on here with the smooth jaws. And I got me a pan of water over here in case it gets hot. Okay, we have it scribed or uh, send it down to the 9 16th line. Now we're going to put the curve on it. Well, I'm going to take down that back side. See there, it's sticking up a little. Okay. 
there, we got them even. Now we put the curve on it. Okay. Now we're gonna take it loose. We're gonna take the birds off of it. Okay. Now we're gonna sand it a little bit. Okay, I didn't sand it all the way down. I'm gonna uh, finish this up with my orbital and I'll show you how I do that. But now we're gonna take off this sharp edge on here. This is the part that some people don't do. They just uh, leave them squared up like that. Okay. Okay, we got kind of a barrel curve on it. Now we're going to put a 240 on here. I like this design because it's real easy to put a belt on it. And this backing plate will come off, and that's how you do the inside of a spur. You can go all the way around like this. Okay, this is a 240. We'll see what it does. Okay, you saw me, I was just rocking it like this. That puts that barrel edge on it. Okay, pretty satisfied with roughing it in with the belt sander. And what we're gonna do is this is gonna look really nice when we get it over to the, the engraving shop. And we're gonna uh, take a orbital and a sanding disc and we're going to smooth this all up real nice get this all smoothed out and then we're going to uh, polish it and it's going to look really good okay i'm going to go back over here we're going to mark our hole for our button and we're going to drill a 3 16th hole through there and then we're going to counter uh, sink it right there so when we put our button in here we can brad it and then we'll take it back to the other shop and get it all polished up and I'll show you how it turns out.
Okay, here's our uh, um, swinger from over there. And I've got my divider set at a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to uh, scribe a line right here. Right in the middle. And then what I would typically do is I do this in steps. I've got all these uh, swingers here to make. And I would grind them all. Uh, scribe them all, grind them all, scribe all these lines this way. Now I reset my dividers for the center and scribe all the centers. And uh, then I would go over and I would drill them all, countersink them all. I don't do one at a time every step, naturally. It goes a lot faster if you'll do it in steps for all of them. Okay, so we're going to set the dividers at half of 9 16 I hope I'm right here. I think that'd be about 9.30 seconds. Then we're gonna mark the center. Looks right. Okay, and then we will go over and counter uh, or center punch this hole and drill 9 16 and countersink it. Okay, I drilled my hole through it, and one thing I forgot to mention that's real helpful is after you drill the holes, um, you can see you've got kind of a burr on the back. You can take it back over to the belt sander and knock that off. You can also open it up and go in between. Just make sure you don't have any burrs in between because you want to make sure uh, when you put that button in there that these come all the way together flat. So I'm going to do that right quick, and then I'm going to countersink this back side of the hole. Okay, we've got it drilled, and like I say, I put the belt in between here and got all the burrs cleaned up. So we're going to go to the back side with this countersink bit and just put a little bit of an edge around there so when we brad that button, it'll sit right. A little bit more. There we go. And you just see a little bit of a fine line around the hole, a bevel, and that'll just allow me to brad that button into there. I don't usually weld them, I always brad them. Okay, we're back in the engraving shop, and uh, here's one of the uh, swingers that we um, ground out there at the shop and uh, from here we're going to dress it up a little bit. First we're going to take a 160 grit and we're going to put it on the orbital okay and we're going to go over some of this I use this type of orbital, but uh, other people have uh, Fordhams and such that are probably a lot better than this, but this is what I've always used. We're just going to polish this up some. Now we're going to go over the curve, and we put this uh, barrel top edge on it, I say barrel edge, a rounded edge on it out there on the belt sander. We're going to go over that again with this. Okay. Now we're going to switch to a 400 grit.
Now we're going to switch to a 600 grit. Same thing. And the idea is to keep smoothing that curve over. Okay, now we're going to put the final polish on, on this one and what we're going to use is a soft felt and black polish. Turn our speed up. I use uh, Orbital, um, I don't think you could do this on a buffer very safely. Then over the curve. You can see it here. Looks a lot nicer than these. This is what um, a typical spur would have, just a squared off. Of course, it'd have the hole drilled in it and be rounded off up here, but just squared off edges. And uh, this particular one, the way we've done, has uh, curved ends, kind of like what a barrel would look like and I've polished the front and back of it uh, the best I could now when you go to put this uh, on the spur like I said we'll put a wedge in here open them up the last thing we'll do is we'll put these on uh, after we've polished the spur and everything and we'll close them back up and we'll put the uh, button in them and brad it here in the bevel uh, side and what we will do is we will protect our new finish with some blue uh, masking tape just so we don't scratch up our finish okay what I wanted to say um, this is just if you're going to have some polished spurs if you uh, are going to have brown or blued spurs, uh, I wouldn't go to the trouble of highly polishing these uh, swingers, of course. I would leave them kind of a rough finish, but I would still curve, on my spurs, I would still curve the ends of the uh, fold so it just makes a, a better looking swinger. And uh, But these spurs are going to be uh, highly polished so I went ahead and polished the swingers too and uh, some of y'all would say well you know as soon as the cowboy puts them on and wears them uh, all that polish is going to go away and they're just going to and the spur strap straps going to uh, cover up 90% of them if not all of them anyway so who's going to see it you know well the person that's going to see it is the one that's receiving these spurs out of the box after they get them from you maybe uh, that old cowboy uh, has been wearing feed store spurs for a long time couldn't afford uh, handmade quality spurs and when his wife buys them for him for 
a special Christmas gift one year she's saved up for and he takes them out of that box and looks at that spur he's going to see the detail on these swingers and the other details you've put in those spurs and he's going to really appreciate the workmanship and craftsmanship that went into making this pair of handmade spurs if uh I'm not saying nothing's wrong with this. These will work just as good as these. I'm just saying that if you want to make a special pair, uh, go to the extra detail to do some of this. It don't take too long for four uh, swingers to do this. Uh, maybe 15 minutes each one. Uh, and uh, you can probably charge a little bit more for something like this. But uh, that old roper when he gets them out of that box for the first time maybe he custom ordered them and he looks at them and says man that's that's a nice pair of handmade spurs and that's why I'm showing you this it's just how you can dress them up a little bit how your spurs can stand out from someone else's now I have seen uh, swingers and Wilson Capron does this is he'll go in here and he'll file lines in here and he'll make this almost look like a bead right here and then maybe this will bevel way out here and he'll put all kinds of detail in these maybe he'll scallop the top of the swinger you know there's lots of things you can do with these but this is the simple um, I'd say this is the simplest dress up you can do to the swinger is what I showed you here Hey, thanks for watching my video. I just wanted to show you how to, to dress up that spur a little bit and uh, uh, create these swingers and make them a little different. Uh, anyway, I uh, appreciate you if you would like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time.